Hello, I'm Martin Fish and welcome back to this next part of the Virtual Flower Show. It's our Q&A special. We've got our team of experts here. These are all exhibitors that you see from around the UK, all specialists in their own field. So we've been sent in a range of questions that they can all answer. Well, hopefully can anyway. So we're going to start this time, Steve, with you. Um, this is a question about Nareem's. Um, and this one is uh, from somebody, and I haven't got a name, unfortunately. Uh, so we'll say their name is Anonymous. Um, they want to know how and when is the best time to establish nareens in the garden and when do you plant the bulbs? Right, with the nareen, uh, the best time to plant is uh, early to mid spring time. If you buy the grade A bulbs, then if you plant early, you should get flowering that same year. The later on you plant them into the season, uh, probably the latest I'd recommend is probably mid late May. Uh, your flowering is probably about 80%. And obviously, as it goes later in the season, you're planting for the following year. Okay. And once you've got them in the ground, are they pretty much permanent? They are they Steve? Once you've planted them in the ground with the nose of the bulb out of the soil, sunny position, well drained, then leave them. And the longer they're in that position, the better they're going to get every year. And they're hardy to minus 10. You can alternatively grow them in a container, probably about six in a 12 inch pot, but you must treat them similar to the agapanthus in a pot and keep them on the drier side through winter and keep protection. Okay, I and mean, they are amazing, aren't they? They are absolutely yeah. beautiful when you see them flowering on mass. That's so. right. Okay, all right, thank you for that. Uh, Rosie, got a question here for you. This is from Dawn and it's about a lovely perennial. And I, I'm never quite sure how to pronounce this. I pronounce it Gilenia, but I know some people say Gilenia. Um, so I don't know what's right, you'll, you'll tell us. Um, in fact, the one I've got in my garden actually came from Hardy's Cottage Garden Plants many, many years ago at the Harrogate Flower Show. And it's a wonderful clump in the garden. This question is from somebody called Dawn. A uh, lady called Dawn would like to know um, how to propagate it. She's tried to divide it, but she said it's quite difficult because it gets a woody base to it. So she's not sure whether that's the way to do it. Okay, so you, I don't mind how people pronounce it. Um, as long as they enjoy the plant, to be honest. So I usually call it uh, Gelenia. And it depends on which varieties you've got because there are some different varieties out there. The majority of people have got Trifoliata, uh, which has a beautiful uh, trifoliate leaf and lovely white flower. It tends to be flowering end of May, June, maybe into July. Um, and this is the, that's the most common variety that people have got. It is divisible, but as she says, it gets quite woody at the base and quite wiry with its stems. So it becomes very difficult to see how you can pull it apart without destroying the whole of the clump. It's a species, so if you collect seed, you can sow the seed. You need to be sowing the seed in the autumn once it's fresh, and it wants to be sown outside because this is a plant that likes a lot of cold for the actual seed to germinate. So you would put it into a seed tray or a pot and put it in the cold frame and let it get a winter of cold weather rather than trying to faff around with putting it in the fridge and back out again. Um, so that's one way of doing it. The other way is that you can take fresh young tip cuttings and that's done in the spring. So when you see the young plants, uh, the new shoots coming off the plants, you would take a lovely tip cutting from those and that will work quite nicely. Now, both of those are going to produce a flowering plant after say two, maybe three years. So you do have to wait. That's that strategy of going from really small babies to an adult takes a bit of time. Okay, have a go with that then Dawn and good luck with it because it is a lovely one. It's just nice sort of light note. And, um, I, I like it in a flower arrangement. It just adds that sort of openness. Yeah, it's lovely. And if you want later season and you still like that flower, then go for the later flowering uh, Galenia stipulata. And that doesn't flower until July. And it's in oh, flower right. okay. later. Good. And if you did the Chelsea chop on it and chopped it down when it's grown, would that delay trifoliata to later in the season? Not a huge amount. It doesn't react quite the same way. Okay, I won't try that one then. <laughs> right, thanks for that. Um, right, um, uh, Matt, we'll go to you next. Um, so this is another Saracenia question that's come in uh, from Philip. Uh, and Philip would like to know 
about overwintering them. He lives in Oxfordshire um, and he's always a bit worried about leaving them outside. So he's wondering whether he should bring them in because he's saying when he does put them outside, they sometimes look a little bit tatty in the spring. And he wonders whether if he keeps them in a warm conservatory over winter, that will look after them, they'll be better um, and they'll go away faster. So really it's a question of is it indoors or outdoors? Well, they do look a bit tatty in the spring. You've got to bear in mind they are herbaceous perennials. So produce all their growth through the spring and summer months, die down in the winter. And the reason they look tatty, it's the previous year's growth. So it's brown and laying down around the plant. So the best thing to do is leave them out, give them a winter rest so they can, you know, rest and build energy for the following spring. Trim off any of the dead growth around about the end of February and they come up nice and clean and straight and what have you. Um, the only two that survive rather than thrive is Saracenia citicina and Saracenia leucophila. These are from Alabama and Mississippi. Will tolerate a frost down to about minus five, minus eight, but a light piece of fleece, a light piece of protection for the winter, just to be on the safe side. But to be honest, if he's in Oxfordshire, I would grow all species and hybrids outside year round. Okay, and let them sort of die down and then grow back again. Yeah. Well, like hostas, Martin, they can, hostas look very tatty if you leave all the old foliage on them. Yeah. Just tidy them all up and then a new fresh growth will come up nice and straight. They look a lot better. Okay, great. Thank you for that one, Matt. Uh, and then Vicky, we've got a question for you here. This is about, uh, it's from Peter, and it's about growing uh, hookahs, hookahella and tyrellas in containers, but especially I'd like to know if you think they could be put into hanging baskets and will they survive sort of being suspended in the air? Right. Well, you can put them all in hanging baskets. Of course, they don't all trail. Um, so it's nice if you can put them with a trail. There are trailing tearellas and trailing cucarellas, but there are no trailing cucarellas. So, um, but uh, there's, a, there's a, lovely, there's, um, a lovely one called uh, Cucarella Redstone Falls. And that will get two to three foot trailers on um, when it's fully grown. Takes a little while to get there. Uh, so if you wanted to put that in, you could put three of those in a basket and that would really fill it quite quickly. And in, in about three years time, you'll have quite a lot of trailers. You do have to just trim them back a little bit in the winter so they're not like swinging around too much. But they soon grow that growth back again in the spring. Um, but sorry. <laughs> no, I was going to say, if you're growing them in containers, what would you expect that, would you put them in just for one season or can you keep them for several years and they'll keep growing and looking good? Well, I, I grow them in wall baskets. Uh, we've got a wall around the garden and I put them around the garden in the basket and they last me about five years. And all you have to do is, is just tie, I just basically chop them off. Uh, and this is for the ground as well, growing the containers on the floor as well. I just chop them off if they start to look really tatty. Um, uh, any time of the year, except sort of back end. I don't root it back end, I leave all that growth on in the back end. Um, I just take a bit of height off it, a length off it, it's a trailer. But um, yeah, and then I just, in the spring, I just chop them all back. I scoop all the soil out a bit, not all of it, but just about that much of it. Put a bit of slow release in there and top dress them and they come back again gorgeous and mine I have had them eight years but that might be a little bit long I think five years you're getting they're looking fabulous then you're working a bit harder to get them to go eight years um but yeah they're great you don't have to bother much with them <laughs> I think that's pretty good going if you can have a plant outside in a container like that for five years I think you've had your money's worth anyway oh, sorry. Sorry you don't the want price. them to last too long you want to sell some more of it I do really yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, they're only the price of a bunch of flowers, let's face exactly. it. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to look at it. Plants are cheap when you actually break it down. They are very cheap. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Right, okay, thank you for that one. Uh, moving on to Lynn then. Uh, Lynn, this is quite appropriate because just behind you, I can see a wonderful begonia rex there. And this is a question from Tom who asked about the vine weevils a while ago. Uh, he's also growing begonia rex in his greenhouse and he wants to know what is the lowest temperature he can take them down to in the winter to keep them healthy and grown without causing any problems. It really does depend on the which type of begonia rex it is. There are some tougher varieties around um, and I would say they tend to be able to go down to about five or six degrees centigrade easily 
Um, but there are some which come more from the tropical areas and they want a minimum of about 15. So really it does depend on the variety. Um, there's like the one behind me here, that will go silver, um, dark, um, dark, dark star, that will go down to quite a, a low temperature, so five or six. But some of the species ones like uh, Seismoria, which um, comes from a more tropical region, yeah, about 15 or 16. So it really does depend on the variety. So unless you've got quite a bit of warmth in the greenhouse, then obviously the tropical ones are really going to struggle, aren't they? They, they won't survive on just frost protection. No, they, they really do need to come indoors or you need to really make sure that greenhouse is well insulated for the winter with some heat. OK, good. Thank you for that. OK, Tom, good luck with them. Uh, moving on to Mark. Uh, Mark, this is an olive question. I know you, you grow and, and do a lot with uh, olives. Uh, this is actually from uh, Bill. Bill, um, he wants to buy some olives and he's been looking them, at them in a garden centre. But he's noticed over the years, he's, he's not actually made the plunge by the sound of it and bought them, but he's noticed that some of them seem to have a very fine leaf and a narrowed leaf, and some of them have a rounder, more coarse leaf. And he wants to know uh, what the difference is, because they're just labelled as olives in the garden centres, and is one better than the other, is one hardier than the other? Which should he go um. There are hundreds of cultivars, but they, they never come into the UK uh, with cultivar names, very rarely. Um, some are tougher than others, but we've, we've not found a difference particularly. We, we used to do name cultivar varieties, but it's very hard to, to, to source them with, with name cultivars. So I wouldn't worry if, it's, if, if he's seeing it in a UK garden centre, it should be a suitable plant for the, for the UK. Okay, right, so that's great. Uh, and finally on this session, before we take a short break um, and let everybody just have a lie down for a short while, Alec, this is a, a peony question. Um, this is um, from Jo, um, and Jo says she planted a peony two years ago next to another peony. It was a Shirley Temple. They were similar size. The older one suddenly grew very large. We changed the soil and added horse manure. And I'd like to move one of them as the smaller one is hard to see. Is it possible and when is the best time to do it? And I think the one she wants to move uh, is Sarah Bernhard. Okay, great. Um, the best time to move them really is the uh, end of September, middle of, up to the middle of October, I would have said. Wait until the plant has completely died down and the foliage has died back totally. Um, at that point, you can cut it back down to the base um, as close to the ground as you dare without damaging any of the little buds that you might see just at the surface. Um, and then I would uh, divide it or move it, um, yeah, between the end of September and middle of October. I wouldn't go much later than that and I wouldn't go much earlier. Um, the important thing is to make sure that you uh, take enough of the roots with it. Um, make sure you don't damage the buds that are just below the surface when you're standing around it because they are just buried under the surface and try and plant it as quickly as possible don't leave it out of the ground too long peonies can be a bit sulky sometimes so it might take a year or so for it to re-establish and start flowering again but if you plant it at the correct depth um, in a sunny spot um, and it's a well-established plant then you should get flowers the following year Okay, and, and, and Joe mentioned the use of horse manure. Um, is that a good idea? Uh, do they like a good rich soil to get them going? Uh, peonies aren't generally too fussy, um, but given a choice, yes, they do like some well-rotted organic um, material. So yeah, well-rotted horse manures are absolutely fabulous. And this week we've had, we've taken delivery of several tons of about three-year-old horse manure and it's the most glorious stuff you've ever seen in your life marvellous stuff so yeah definitely mulch it in um peonies do like it if you can give it to them okay that we'll be back in a short while to answer even more see you then <laughs> 